The United States of America is a, is a deliberate construct. It was, uh, it was a country that was packaged and sold to the world as a deliberately attractive proposition because uh, it was a country that needed to attract investment, it needed to attract uh, immigrants more than anything else. And so um, in, in my book, Brand America, I did describe in a slightly playful way um, how the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were effectively the brand strategy of this new product or service that was launched upon the world. And um, in a sense, the, this is where the whole concept of, of, of nation as brand has originated from. Although, of course, you can look back in history and you can say from Alexander the Great, the rulers of countries have wanted to uh, create a vision, a sense, a package out of their country so that it would inspire fear or admiration or, or what have you. But it was only with the United States that this sort of unholy marriage of uh, marketing communications and national progress became, started to become regularly united. And the, the extraordinary thing about it um, is that it doesn't work. Um, I've spent quite a lot of, far too much of the last 20 years studying countries and cities and regions as they've tried to do this kind of stuff. And mainly what I've been looking for is one single properly documented case study of a country, a nation, that has demonstrably moved its own reputation deliberately in the eyes of the world through some sort of communications exercise. And I'm still looking. I have not found one. If there was a country that had succeeded in doing this, then we'd know about it because they'd brag about it. And what I find perfectly extraordinary is the fact that so many of them continue to do this. And hardly a month goes by when one doesn't read of some desperately poor African country spending often millions of dollars of, of taxpayers or donors' money on nation branding or even nation rebranding is a phrase I, I hear these days without any indication that they know that it can work. And if Nike does branding, and if Apple and Coca-Cola and Levi's do branding, it must be a good thing, and therefore we must do it too. And call me old-fashioned, but I think if you're spending taxpayers' money on anything, democracy or non-democracy, it has to be measurable and accountable. Uh, and you have to be able to prove that it's achieving something. Actually, there's a strong correlation between governments that spend a lot of, a lot of money on public relations and their images declining. It would seem that the more money a government spends on PR, the worse their image becomes. And I don't think that that's because PR damages their image. I think it's because they hire PR agencies because they've got an image problem. And there's nothing that PR can do, that, to, can do to change that, because if you've got an image problem, it's usually because you've got a reality problem. The reason is because people don't form their opinions about countries as a result of what they read in the media. And they're already prejudiced against that country. And the more times they, re they are reminded of its existence, the more angry they become. And so, actually, if you've got a negative image, the last thing you should do is hire a PR agency. Marketing, advertising, public relations, these operations work when your basic message is a very simple one. Buy this, it's good. I want to sell you a mobile phone. My message to you, no matter how uh, fancy I make that message, is still, buy this, it's good. And consumers, ordinary people out there, accept that. It's, it's, it's part of the modern culture, has been for a hundred years or more, that we accept that, that you're allowed to tell me through the media that your product is a good one, and if I'm in the market for that product, I will half listen to what you're saying, and I may consider it next time I'm going to buy that product. So when you're selling tourism, it's the same thing. Tourism must not be confused with nation brand. Tourism is selling a service. It's an idiot business. The more money you spend on tourism promotion, the more tourists you'll get. It's a very, very simple thing to do. If they don't have a great time, they may not come back, but that's another issue. Nation branding, on the other hand, is not selling a product at all. The last time I checked, Britain was not for sale. When we go out and say to people, Britain is wonderful or Britain is fabulous or whatever, we're not saying, buy this product, it's good. We're saying, you will change your mind about this country. And everybody knows what that is. That's government propaganda. Indeed, it's propaganda from a foreign government. And so they instinctively dismiss it. They ignore it. There's a huge anomaly at the heart of all of this. Nation branding, soft power, public diplomacy. It's 200 years out of date. And what we should be looking at now is not how do we screw over the uh, inhabitants of other countries and steal a march on them. It should be how do we work together with them. Mm -hmm.